Hello, beautiful souls. Thank you for joining us for another episode of What's Up Wednesday with Leah and Lucy. Hi. How are you today, Leah? I'm good. I'm good. Had to go out and about into the real world for a little bit today, but I'm back. Going to have my tea and my big mug. It's pretty. It's not the same. The, the Rui Bose chai, but it's nothing just fancy to share that way. But yes, I love it. And I, I travel it. So. Yeah. I travel One of that. my favorite mugs. I don't do the small cups very often. How about you? No little teacups for you, ma'am? No, no. I do the big, the big mugs of tea. I don't do the little bitty tea time things. That's nice on occasion. I, I have uh, the same tea, um, Blackberry Focus. May all things and all beings be happy. Is my note, and I'm in my Trump silent majority cup today. Nice. Since he won the election, and I'm Yay. super happy about that. Oh my gosh, right? It's just, it amazes me how many people aren't, but I have a feeling they're the minority. They just are really loud. Because, yeah. oh my goodness, oh my yeah. goodness, when you truly love people, and you want the best for people as a whole, it just makes so much sense to me. And I don't mean that for someone who doesn't agree with me, I don't think, you know, it's, it is what it is. Ugh. I think, I think the single biggest factor that we all, all 100% have got to get a handle on is our judgment. Because society tells us to judge. Society is like all about judgment and laying blame and guilt and shame and all the things that are low vibration. And, and boxing things up. Yeah. And uh, they are not very good about stepping off the judgment train, in my opinion. They're not very good about seeing growth in someone where in their twenties, maybe they did blah, blah, blah. And now today they aren't, and they, you know, always want to go back to that. And if you're yeah. that person, I'm just going to ask you straight up. Are you the exact same person you were when you were 20? Please and don't judge they, me when I, from when you knew me as a 20 year old. Yeah. And to that, do you want everyone to negate the growth that you have done since you were 20? Mm -hmm. You see, I fully accept that I was such a raging bitch when I was 20 years old. I was, and I lived in wow. judgment of others. You and I wouldn't have been friends for long. No, I, I, <laughs> I didn't have a lot of friends. That was another thing. Um, and I'm really happy that I grew out of that. I'm really happy that I learned um, better ways to handle life. And I'm much, much happier without that aspect of me. And I definitely want others to also um, let themselves grow out of bad habits. You let yourself grow out of non-serving ways. We, we do things because everybody else around us is doing them. And then we go, wait a minute, that doesn't feel very good. I think I'm going to go the other direction. And then when you make that choice, applaud it, celebrate it. So if we want that for ourselves, but we're not willing to give that same latitude to others, like, are you just living to be a hypocrite? Because that's pretty much what's happening. You know, and, and there's a lot of other ways to say it. Leah will tell you, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It, it is what it is. And, and if you want people in general, all people to be more accepting and more kind and more compassionate and more empathetic, then you have to start with yourself. So in your own life, being more kind, compassionate, empathetic, and accepting will change your perspective of things. I've experienced it and I've seen it way too much to think that that's, that doesn't happen. It absolutely does happen. You just have to get out of your own way. And yeah, you know, within hours of the uh, election, there were um, seemingly 
very um, uh, negative events that were taking place that have been taking place for a long time. And all of a sudden they did a 180. All of a sudden they're like, okay, we're not going to play this game anymore because somebody who means business is now in office or will be, Mm -hmm. you know, soon or whatever. Now I'm of the opinion that he's never left office. He's been CIC Trump for a very long time ever since. And Fojo, you know, you can visit him in the grave site, but I know other people don't believe that. And I get that. And I understand that it's all been a part of a very, very grand design source likes to say 500 D chess which we have seen play out time and time again. And so I, I understand that I don't understand all of it and I, it's not for me. And I, I accept that too. I'm just really happy to see that the temperature has been dialed down for people in general, uh, except for those that want to be loud. Like you said, the squeaky wheel and um, they are literally doing the exact thing that they say is not okay to do after an election. (laughs) Absolutely. So, you know, you got to have to just sit and look at that. You know, you have, everybody has free will choice to make their own decisions. And I've always been in this camp since. Now, the truth is, I think I've said this in other videos. I was ex-military and, uh, I got out of the military when Clinton was president because he was a horrible leader. He cut the budget so bad. Nobody could get funding for promotions. Nobody could go to school. Nobody could do anything. Everybody was just stagnant and stacked on top of each other. And in the military, the only way to get a a raise, a pay raise is to be promoted or put yourself in harm's way. And, um, You know, there's a lot of, this was in the early nineties. So there was a lot of times that we went hungry. We don't, we didn't make hardly anything. And, uh, we didn't, cause we're in the military, you didn't qualify for food assistance or anything like that. And, uh, and, and they were cutting the budget. So sometimes the chow hall would just not be open to feed us, you know? And so, um, that's crazy. Yeah, it it is. And, uh, I knew a lot about, um, the rumblings throughout the military when I was in it myself, obviously been removed for a very long time since 97, but I knew in 2016 that as far as I was concerned, there was not a candidate. I didn't vote. Uh, Hillary was not going to get my vote. And I didn't think that the, the, uh, the media mogul, the, the real estate mogul was going to like, what was he going to do? Right. And then he got elected and then all the promises he made started coming through Mm -hmm. being done, acted on day one. And I was like, Holy shit. (laughs) Right. We got an actual president here. (laughs) Says he's going to do it. And it's happening. What? I know. The key is that he's not a politician. Absolutely. He's a businessman, not a politician. So, uh, he earned my respect. He earned my respect. There was nothing that I, I never even watched any of the TV shows that he was in or any of that stuff. That just was not in my forte and still isn't, but I did respect the work that he did and I, and I have ever since. And so, um, you know, respecting other people's opinions. That's great, but I'm not going to feed into the, the, the craziness, the crazy mongering and the fear mongering and all that. There is such a level of restored and renewed hope and restored and renewed faith. And, um, people are, are feeling that this weight has been lifted off of them. And, uh, that was the palpable change that I felt ever since the 5th of November. that's one very true that's one big thing and um I really do hope that people can you know put their energy toward things that are positive for them in their life so today is the 1111 portal so portals are just um, convergence in the date and time time also astrology so the, the, the different placements of the moon and the planets and all these different things, I'm 100% not an astrology person. I appreciate those who can do it, but 
I'm not really able to devote that much of my brain power to astrology. I'm just not <laughs> too many other things that I'm doing with my brain power. Um, but on any portal day, so if it's August 8th, 8, 8, if it's nine, nine, so today is 11, 11, November 11th. And yes, we're recording this ahead of Wednesday because we're busy people. Um, <laughs> we, we can yeah, we want to um, put forth good, genuine, clear intentions to manifest our highest timeline. And all portal dates are about manifesting and bringing in a new beginning, a new timeline, like a closing the chapter of one book and starting the chapter, a new chapter in a different direction, possibly. And I think this is a great time for people to really take inventory of their of their vortex, inventory of their life, like What's not working for me today that used to work for me? And it could have been as, as soon as yesterday, like yesterday, this worked for me. And today it feels like I'm a salmon swimming upstream. So there's a, there's been a shift here, you know, right. and, and cluing into that shift in energy. I think that's a big, um, a big testament to the evolution of the people that are on our planet, because uh, we've been such observers of of the flow of energy and or the lack of thereof and now i'm asking people to participate in your own energy flow so if you are like white knuckling your life because you want to control every aspect of it do yourself a favor and let go let go of the control that you think you have over your life because you really don't and just yeah, just see how things flow in and out of your, in and out, even if it's for two hours, like turn the phone on silent, be, just be, whatever it is that you're doing, just be, I mean, unless someone truly, truly needs you, but, and just see what it feels like. If you feel completely peace and calm inside, then you're doing some things right. And if you feel anxious and nervous and uncertain, then you have some work to do, but that's okay. You, you always have free will choice to do the work. So I think, okay. to, I think today is a great day for people to see that uh, the cup is half full, not half empty. And that there's really a, a vital role that we all pay, play in co-creating our reality. That is really, truly not up to anyone else but yourself to co-create your happiness i mean what, what do you add to that i know i know that just totally came <laughs> through right before we push record she said i don't know what we're talking about today and i'm like i don't either it's just supposed to flow so we'll find out here it is <laughs> i wondered you mentioned timelines a lot and how would you define those or explain those to somebody who's going, what do you mean a new timeline? What, what is going on? And somebody who's new to this is saying, wait, you can change timelines. How do you yeah. wrap that up in a pretty bow or not? <laughs> well, the first step in explaining to anyone is their acceptance that it's not, life is not what we thought it was. Life and time is not linear. We are presented with a linear time where you go to kindergarten and then you go to first grade and then, you, you know, like that's all linear Past, and your present and your future yes. that you're living this life. And then when this life ends, some people believe that that's it. You just never exist again. That's not true. Um, or then that you, once you finish this life, then you have your next life and it's all in succession and that's not true. So the best way to open them up to that is ask them to watch Doctor Strange and the Multiverse. Multiverse, the Marvel movie, yes. Because it gives a visual connotation to what is really the reality where we filter through these timelines and they're like pages in a book. Mm -hmm. And you can literally jump timelines up higher consciousness down lower consciousness by your free will choices that you make every second of the day so let's just hypothetically say i'm out at at the grocery store and 
uh, right now they got the bell ringers, right? The, the, what is it? The Salvation Army? The Salvation Army. Yep, yeah. The Christmas stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I give five bucks in the bucket and keep on walking and just give it with the clear intention of hopefully this finds someone who's truly in need and let it go. That in that moment, I chose a higher timeline. I immediately jumped to a higher timeline. Did I physically jump to a higher timeline? No, because <laughs> we're all energy. So you're just shifted to a different, a different timeline for you. If I would have chosen not to give, if I would have chosen anything less than love, then I would have chosen the lower timeline. And the other way that I think about that is each time you make a, de a decision that you're service to others, you're in a higher timeline. And if you make a decision that you're in service to self, you're in a lower timeline. And we all have those choices all the time. Mm -hmm. And we change timelines multiple thousands and thousands of times a day. Now there are big timeline shifts that the entire population goes through that gets felt. Those are more uh, palpable in our life, but it's just a convergence of everybody switching timelines in that, in that moment, or the majority of people switching timelines in that moment. So I don't know if that was clear as mud or not, but. <laughs> what helps? I mean, I'm pretty sure I texted you at one point saying I was driving somewhere. I was like, I really, I must have switched timelines because I do not remember driving this one section on that way. It's like, wait, all of a sudden I'm here. I know I drove. I mean, everything's still fine, but I really don't remember passing those three roads or that intersection. Yeah. And here I am again. It's like, whoop. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> something uh, happened. There's, there's a, there's another phenomenon that's a little bit more complex when it's called a time slip. And that's where you literally see things in a different era, a different time. Oh, wow. where you can go to a bookstore, a bookstore that you have visited time and time and time again. But this time when you go around the corner, it's a different bookstore. Is that totally different from what you, what has always been there. You turn the same corner. location that yes. you always go to, but it's got it now it's got a different name and you're thinking, and, and the person behind the counter goes, it's always been named this. Yeah. You know? Okay. You know, and then you go, you walk out and you go, am I losing my mind? And, and then you look around and you go, but everything else is the same. And what, our human brains do is they go, we can't figure that out. So we're just going to throw that to the back. We're uh -huh. not going to, mm, not going to give that any attention. Say, okay. That happened. I'm moving on. Yeah, that happened. So <laughs> it is a bigger concept to understand that, that time and timelines it, time is really like this, right? It's not like this, like mm -hmm. we're taught and, and, and beings from outside of our universe, outside of the, the lower dimension planets, look at us on a, on a linear timeline and they go, <laughs> this is like watching paint dry. <laughs> oh, it's so funny because, um, uh, one of my favorite, it's not, a, it's not a secret. It's not a, it's not a drop or a bomb. One of my favorite shows is ancient aliens. And, uh, -huh. uh a lot of times they talk about timeline and they talk about, um, things that, that some of the smartest, most cerebral beings on this planet came up with to communicate with extraterrestrials. And they end up doing like pixelated you know, pictures or binary code, and they're not sure how to communicate. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> because I know my own experience is I can be sitting here, not say a word, not write it down, not dot an I across a T or download it or type it or anything. And Mother Sophia and Source Creator know exactly what I'm saying, like exactly what my thoughts are. And but how do I know that? Because they'll come in and go, I know what you're thinking. And no, that's not, <laughs> you know, like I get a message contradictory to what my thoughts were. Or in the middle of receiving something and you're, and you start to reply in mind, oh, I wonder about, and all of a sudden you're hearing the answer to them. It's like, yes. oh yeah, da, da, da. It's like, wait, yes. 
well, obviously you hear what I thought. I didn't have to think it into any further. You knew, and it's just, it's a snap. It's just there. It's just it's, there. It's kind of, it's fun, but it's also a little bit unsettling. It's always strange, just different or a little disconcerting initially. It's a little unsettling. But it's yeah. also one of those where it kind of reaffirms. Yeah. I do have this faith. I do have this trust in what is happening. And I didn't just speak any of that question out of my mouth. I didn't even finish the question, but I received an answer a moment later about everything I just thought. Like, oh, yes. That was really cool. <laughs> yes. 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 And whenever it first started for me like that, uh, I had to ask other people and in a way that I didn't give it away. Right. So mm -hmm. I'd say something like, can you confirm that I just received a message from so-and-so like mother Sophia and it was the exact opposite of what I was thinking. Like, and they, they would confirm. And I'm like, so, <laughs> so me being raised Catholic, memorizing all these prayers, you know, like you got to say how many Holy Rosaries and how, like, you know, how many Hail Marys <laughs> right. before they picked up the phone and, and. Uh, Oh, give me a break. They hear you. They know who you are. Yes. They're with you all the time. Stop jumping through those religious hoops because they look at our language and our behavior and it is subpar. Right. The only time we have issues communicating with them is when they're trying to dumb it down for us to understand what's happening. Not the other <laughs> way around. Uh, they know there's a, how, how can we get best get this through their brain into their heart <laughs> without their brain stopping it? Yeah. Uh, so the, the clairvoyance, wink, wink, <laughs> and the clairaudience have it a little bit easier in my opinion, because they get a video, they get an image, they get a vision and they get some audio to go with it. And that's really how our human brain functions best visual and auditory. But the claircognizance of the world, let's unite. <laughs> we have to just allow that information to drop into our knowing and trust it. And that to me is a bigger leap because it's, it's so opposite to what we're taught. Um, and so my, in case you didn't pick up on that, my gift is claircognizant and Leah is more clairvoyant and clairaudient. Uh-huh. She has some claircognizant, but I will let her explain it. How easy is that? So it depends if I'm getting in my own way. Exactly. And it also depends on who's sending it. Because sometimes some messengers are very much only clairaudient. I hear words, 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 words. Others, it's a vision. And it's challenging for me sometimes to put that vision into words. They can give it all and I can have a sense about it, a feeling about it. I mean, I know what's be being expressed to me, Yeah. but to share it with somebody else who hasn't had that vision, Yeah. <laughs> putting it into words. They say the picture is worth a thousand words. They're not kidding. Yeah. Um, but Claire Cognizant, when it happens, it's neat. It's a matter of me setting myself aside a bit as far as a judgment because I, I do still need that I should say I seek that affirmation and, and and generally you know can you confirm this did did I get a message with such and this phrase in it I won't share the entire mm -hmm. thing because I don't want to I want to whoever that is to be as neutral as possible right um but it when it happens that's that's really neat it doesn't happen as much for me but it is one of those wham oh well I don't know how I know what I just do yeah. Okay. Well, that was yeah. given to me. Neat. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it feels easier because I'm not listening for sentence upon sentence upon sentence or, okay, the picture, the picture is honestly the easiest one for me. Um, like there it is in an image, 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 image. Again, putting that then into, into words is yeah. a little more difficult. When we, when I do a golden crown activation on, on beings, it's really in a, in an effort to give the human the opportunity to have holographic communication. Holographic communication is the communication of the higher dimension where it's, it's not a word or just a video 
or um, a really sensational story. It's all those things combined. And so holographic Im uh, messaging means that you're, you're getting the emotion, the feeling of the event, the story of the event and the visual of the event all at one time. And so, yeah, that could be a little overwhelming if you don't, if you're not expecting it, but it's also asking us to evolve into a higher plane of communication, a higher level of communicating that it's not just words, <laughs> you know, and, and, then, and it, you never it, know what the tone may convey in the words. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, that's where we're, that's where we're headed to, that's, but you got to get out of your own way. And so all the beings that are like, yeah, yeah, you're just, you know, hearing yourself talk or, you know, whatever. And I'm like, yeah, my brain was never that smart. <laughs> I nope. mean, I've always had great conversations with myself for yeah. every, as long as I can remember, but at the same time, it wasn't always me. I just didn't realize yeah. until yeah. more recently. Oh, yeah. who was that? Who was that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I've had people say that to me before. I think you were one of them whenever we first started working with you. I'm like, but I thought that was my own ideas, like myself talking, you know, and I'm like, okay, when did you learn that? When did you experience that to know it? Did you experience mm -hmm. that in this life to know it? Well, no. Okay. Cause it's not your ideas because your right. brain your physical brain and your ego and, and that whole thought pr process is with you for this life. It started to develop in this life. So if you pull in knowledge that is from a prior life, it was given to you by your higher self or mm -hmm. a guide or your incarnation energy from that life. It didn't come from yourself in this moment in like your own brain and so uh, explaining any of this to anyone like the first step is they have to be accepting of new things and they the first thing you have to accept is everything we've been told is a lie I'll give five percent is not five percent truth everything else though it's a small percentage it is it, when you look at the context of yes yes in the things. grand scheme everything is just an easier generalization yeah Just sprinkle truth here or there to make it legit and then make the rest up well it's not easy another reason no. that the uh the the observers of this earth experiment look at us with admiration and respect is because this is not an easy task no it's school and earth is a school it's school it's a hard and school it's training and that's, again, if you're just sitting along, you know, sit on the couch, swinging your feet, waiting for someone to come along and save you, that's where you're going to be whenever the world ends. Because it's for you to do the work, to grow and to become bigger and better than what you are now. And I don't say that in a conceited, egotistical way. It's more expansive of your energy, where you allow yourself to grow into things that you never even thought of. Um, that is part of ascension. And so, uh, again, leaving the judgment, leaving the low vibrational stuff behind, you know, there's not going to be a citation and a source on all the information that we get, um, except for source creator. Source. That's my source. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know of a better one, <laughs> but yeah, but source trumps all things. Show enough. <laughs> so, um. I, I started my, uh, my new venture as far as a new series goes. I, I did my first one today. Tell me, tell um, me. And so the premise is when I was nursing, when I was a registered nurse, my entire career, over 20 some odd years, people would always say, what's the craziest thing you've ever seen? And you were in the ER a lot too, weren't you? I worked ER primarily. I worked okay. ICU some, and then I was a supervisor, house supervisor. So a nursing supervisor over the entire facility, mostly night shift my entire career. ER, full moon, night shift. Yes. I'm sure you have some stories. Yeah. I learned early on that new moons are worse than full moons. Oh, 
portal days are very big too for the psychiatric community. Mm. Mostly because they're not psychiatric patients, mostly right. because they're they're hearing their voices and clairaudient and they're seeing visions because they're clairvoyant and people are thinking that they're crazy and they're thinking that they're crazy too, but they're really not. They're just gifted. Yeah. Um, I know that now. I didn't know that then. I was like, I need more Haldol. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I have said this before, but I had always been under the umbrella of um, secrecy, anonymity. Mm-hmm. Now, my my point in doing this is not to out any one being facility, state, region, none of that. It's just to say, you can't make this shit up. (laughs) This happened somewhere in the past 20 years. (laughs) And it's all my experiences. I was in it. I experienced it. This is not hearsay. This is not something that I saw somewhere and I wanted to relate to you. I'm not looking at somebody else's content. This is all comes from within, from me. And uh, so anyway, I did the first one today and it was an event that happened in 1991. And so that was the other thing, like these things have been occurring for me from 1991 until 2022. So the expansive of things, but I was jotting down last line. I'm like, let me just, you know, is this even, how does this even feel to write these down? And before I knew it, I had 17 events yeah Uh and uh I was I was giggling thinking about them (laughs) and I'm like you know even if it's just my own comic relief I need that in life I need to laugh more um I do so much ascension guiding and clearings and all those things which I do love I love but it's serious business right um when you're when you're guiding people to take inventory of their vortex and they realize that 75% of their vortex is NPCs and OPs. It's heavy. Yes. And I needed this like release. And so, uh, it's funny and it's shocking and it's, again, you can't make this shit up. And, uh, (laughs) it's, it was my life and I'm happy to be beyond that, but it's some things that I just think will bring, you know, comic relief, humor, laughing raises your vibration naturally. Absolutely. So That's medicine, I believe. Yeah. Yes. The medicine that's not medicine. It's not medicine. Yeah. So, so when do, what's the series title? When do we get to see it? Where? I, all I haven't that? decided for sure. I think the series title is going to be what's the craziest thing you've ever seen. Okay. Catch it. And it'll be episode one, two, three, four, five, you know, like that. And then, so you'll have to get into it to see what it's about. Um, you know, the first one is Command Sergeant Major light bulb. Light bulb. <laughs> so you have a series, what's the craziest thing you've ever seen? And then episode, and that would be a title. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, and they're short. They're just, you know, some are a few minutes and some are going to be a little bit longer to give the context of things or whatever. But again, it's just, I'm going to set it up and, and describe it, how I experienced it. And, and it's just to, I think it's going to end up being a little bit cathartic for me because I do, um, I've healed a lot from, um, the, the events the betrayal of realizing my career was a part of the dark side. Right. Uh, I feel a lot from that, but there was a, another aspect of it. I discovered yesterday, which is never being able to speak about it. Right. And we talk about speaking about your oh, truth yes. oh, and gosh, yes. holding those events in uh, because of fear of repercussions or punishment, punitive or whatever. Like, I'm beyond all that. You know, I, I no longer function as a registered nurse, nor will I ever. And so I don't, that I don't have that hammer like o- above me and right. I'm going to be able to just release all that too. And so even if I'm the only one that ever watches it, it'll be fine. Well, and that's, you may find a lot of nurses tune into you that way and saying oh my gosh she's telling it like it is oh I had that happen too yeah (laughs) camaraderie yay yeah because by and large I mean we all see things that we can never tell anybody about as long as you're still 
working as a nurse. Like you have to be far enough removed from that. And I'm not going to ever, you know, out anybody. I'm not doxing anybody. That's not happening. These are just events. And I can almost guarantee you that things that I have encountered in this day and time or whatever also happened in a different timeline. (laughs) Right. Right. To other nurses and other places, because it's just not, you know, unfortunately these things do happen. And although I find them very wackadoodle-ish. Good word. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm no, I know I'm not the only one that sees it, you know? And so I do, I kind of hope that it's a, it's a place that people can vent in the comments, you know, and I'm pretty sure it's going to have to live on rumble for all my YouTube. I was about to ask that. (laughs) this a rumble level (laughs) yeah I don't want to not be authentic because of the platform right you know and uh distinguishing I want it to be the story that it needs to be because it was again I lived it I'm not embellishing any of it it's definitely salacious just on its merit Um, sometimes. And so, but I do think it needs to live on rumble. So if you're not following me on rumble, please do. So the link is in the description of all my videos and that's where like the juicier stuff is. So, um, like letting go series, I had to put religious dogma on rumble. That's the only place you can find it. And, um, it's gotten pretty pretty good views over there. So I, I don't do a ton of stuff in rumble, um, and it's a kind of a pill to upload there, but I do it. I set time aside. And I'm like, okay, today's my rumble upload day. And I just, right. try, I'm doing content. I'm just steady uploads and stuff waiting for the, the timer to go by, but I'm kind of excited about it. That is exciting because you've talked about having those stories before and sharing them at some point. And so now here's the point. Yay. You see, yeah, I, hands? Ah, I thought about yay. it in like book format. Right. But something that our brother Esau said about my book, he's like, well, is it an audio book? And I'm like, no, can you not read the book? That the other day? <laughs> but it's true where everyone's still so fast and their life and they're pushed to do this and pushed to do that. And the sad truth is a lot of people spend time in traffic and, yes. um, I'm a music lover. I'm not, I'm not saying don't listen to your music, but if you want to change, then maybe you can listen to, you know, that kind of stuff too. And, uh, so I decided not to put it in book format. Plus, you know, my facial expressions are, Oh, you've got to do this invoice on video. 100%. (laughs) It will not, it will not translate as well to book format unless you already know your voice and your personality. If I already, like knowing you, I could read it and hear you saying it, but if I'm new to it, it wouldn't quite have the panache that it will now. Exactly. <laughs> now, That's the recording decision. Sold or Soulless is an audiobook. That one I can get behind because you meet people where they are. Yeah. But for this series, yes. Yes. That's what but I decided. Full charm. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm like licorice. People either love me or they hate me. And I accept it for what it is. She's the black sheep and she's black licorice. I'm the reverse. <laughs> I'm, I think I'm the reverse black sheep because I was the young little beacon of light in my, you know, dark family. So, mm-hmm. but I, I did not fit in. Sometimes. Like, why do we call it a black sheep when it's the one that's making the difference? Yeah. Where'd that come from? Yeah. So I'm the reverse black sheep. <laughs> <laughs> the dove in the darkness. Ooh, ah. that one's good. Yeah. Whole, your video uh, power just took a sepia tone for a minute. Now I know. Up. Honestly, this happens when I have to cross souls over. Oh, really? It's happened a couple of times, so maybe. Yeah. I didn't cross them over when I got back. Oh, yep, there it goes again. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they need to. I'll get them moved on. We'll take a moment here. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I get that they've all crossed over now. Okay. We We had a crowd. Coloration in a minute. (laughs) They were determined. We had a crowd. That's how they get my attention. When I'm, when I'm working, 
I really do try to focus on what I'm doing. And funny thing about that. Yeah. And (laughs) that is how they get my attention. When I start seeing myself go from like bright white to the softer, I know that they're messing with my light. (laughs) And you you can't make this up. Yeah. So on that note, when we did love waves two days ago, two, maybe two, three days ago, we had done this before, but we just, we were led to do it again to invite the, the energy of the organic portals and the NPCs to cross over to the light. Mm-hmm. And since then, there's been a lot of them showing up to be crossed over. And so we've been crossing over a lot all throughout the day. Every time we cross a bunch over, there's more. <laughs> So, um, it's like they're coming in droves, but they're not, they don't just keep coming. It's like, okay, our turn. Chunk. Yeah. And then, okay, there's space now and a group steps forward again. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not just me. It's not just Leah. Like it's all of us. We're all getting them. And, uh, and it'll be like that. It was that way for, I don't know, maybe a couple of weeks last time. And it was funny because <laughs> I didn't tell anybody I offered, <laughs> What did you do? We were doing love waves and in, yeah. in my own intention, I sent my love wave out inviting the beings that are NPCs and oak organic portals to the light to cross over to be healed. And I okay. just did it in my mind while we were doing the love wave and I didn't say it to anyone. I didn't even think about it again. I just sent it out. I just did it. Yeah. And then I don't know, like two or three days later in the group someone's like how come we got so many npcs and organic portals happening? what's going on and you're like mm, kind of did something i'm like <laughs> oh did i did i forget to tell y'all that? yes you did <laughs> oh. oh but again spirit, the spirit you can't moving. make it up because no one else knew and yet people everybody was experiencing it yeah and then when they when i told them they're like well that makes sense would have been nice <laughs> to know <laughs> that was the puzzle piece we were missing yeah yeah so it lasted a couple of weeks last time and it was a significant number too that's the other thing like significant oh, number yeah. left and so for those that are questioning like we're not first of all beings can be alive without a soul so I didn't remove anyone's life force no. um this is a volunteer thing they want to go to the light to be healed so, um, and then the, the human that they are were, or was, um, they all have an exit strategy. They all have a, a path and a plan and it's going to be whatever it's going to be. That doesn't change anything. It just gives their energy to the light, to the divine, to heal, to be, uh, set forth on a different path going forward without living through the tumultuous times that the lower timelines definitely have coming. Speaking of timelines, timeline, woo. we just yeah. circle right back. Yeah. So I don't know if it's easy to ever explain that kind of stuff to, to people that don't have a knowing, I think you have to experience it. I think we're all degree. learning too, but you gave a good, you the general, I mean, what is this? Okay, here you go. I remember when I watched, I wasn't, I wasn't back in the day. <laughs> Before a long, long time ago, before Source was my party planner, <laughs> I didn't watch sci-fi stuff. Right, I, I just didn't like the the one exception was like Transformers. I love Transformers movies. Um, but then I started getting guidance from Mother Sophia to watch Marvel and DC comic movies, and I was really like kicking and screaming. I'm like, but I don't wanna. And she'd go, Not watch it anyway. Genre. Yeah, watch <laughs> it anyway. And so that's what I said when she said to watch. And I, and she would give them to me in a particular order. So if she gave me two or three and I'd pick the one I wanted, she was like, no, you're going to watch. <laughs> like, this is how I want you to watch them. <laughs> Let Cherry pick what I'm told. Yeah, no. So <laughs> the day that she gave me Wakanda, mm. Black Panther, one the original one i had not watched it and um doctor strange the multiverse i was like kill me now (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> like, what did I do? And again, in that moment, without saying a word, Mother Sophia is like, you will watch them and you will learn. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and you know what? I did. And they, they taught me so much. Um, because as I'm watching, I'm getting downloads and I'm like, this is absolutely real. I've been there. Like this is triggering memories. And so then I'm always very grateful. And I always have most of you going, I told you so. <laughs> She's like, I didn't say you had to like it, but you're going to do it. And yeah. you will, yeah. you'll realize why. Yeah. Yeah. And so I do recommend, um, to stop really thinking that it's all science fiction. Cause it's really more science fact. And a lot of the information that those filmmakers get to create the scripts and all the things come from downloads, just mm -hmm. like our downloads. And uh, they are able to then, you know, access, tap into the, the movie industry. And so we've been being shown truth for a long time, wrapped up in a science fiction label. What is the movie... I don't remember all of their names. It is a Marvel movie. It's with a bug, bug man or something. And he goes Ant into a quantum. Ant-Man. Ant-Man. Bug okay. man. The second... Bug man is too broad. <laughs> Which kind of bug are we talking about? <laughs> so Ant-Man and is it Michelle Pfeiffer? Is she the, yeah. the mom lead? They have to go yeah. and like rescue she's her. In the and quantum. She's fix stuff up. That one was really fascinating. And, and that, yeah. so that one was the third one of that. Third in the series. I was thinking it was the second. Okay. No, because they did Ant-Man and then they did Wasp, which was the girlfriend. Okay. Remember? So while he was gone, yeah. she was doing her thing. And then, oh, and yes. then Ant-Man came again. Okay. So I'm many saying, to watch. Glad you remember all of this. I don't, I've seen them all, but it's been a while. And I didn't internalize I, as much either watching them I was, as when I watch again and again. I was given all that stuff like homework assignments, you know, mm -hmm. and I didn't have the memory capacity. Like when I was in nursing school, I struggled. I had to remember all the drugs and everything, but I have amazing memory capacity now. And so I have to give that to Source and Mother Sophia. I really be believe that they imbued me with that so that I could pull in this knowledge uh because you know is amazing as so a many details as a commander of so many you know i have to i have to be able to i have to know it mm -hmm. and uh not be like oh let me go back and pull this. where did i find where did i put that like i can't <laughs> that doesn't serve well so um i give all the my gratitude to source and mother sophia for giving me those abilities now because uh when i went through cancer treatment and I had chemo brain I doubted being able to recall anything ever again in my life like ever because I was I was asking the question 20 times a day and never remembering the answer I would remember asking the question and they were being answered but I don't ever remember the answer so then by nightfall I was pissed I was like I've asked this question 20 times a day and my daughter would be like, and we have answered it every time. And I would, then I would feel bad, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I don't remember. So I thought I would never nurse again. Cause how do you do an assessment? If you can't remember the answers to the question, you know, that kind of stuff. Like I would have to be charting in real time all the time and never, you know, that scary thought. And so, uh, they helped me, they helped me along the way. When I was able to go back to work, I had and this was long before my like awakening, but I was able to go back to work and I had such better recall. I could tell you the patient's name and what they were there for and all kinds of stuff. And it was not associated with a room number, which is how everybody else remembers who their patients are uh -huh. by a room number. And, um, and I, I had struggled with that before. And so wow. give it up to source and mother Sophia for helping. But right on. Anna says that sometimes too. Do you have photographic memory? I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah. You'll random, you'll say something, I'll ask about it. And you're like, oh, well, da, 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 da. And then you'll rattle off other details. And then you'll pull something in from, I don't know where, how do you know all this or remember all this? Like how, I mean, you read this once you saw this once and you're like, oh, well, so-and-so from such and such. 
Yay, I'm so glad you know. <laughs> I'm so glad you could answer that. Thank you. <laughs> Apparently, they knew I was going to need those skills and they gave yes. them to me. And I'm grateful. Awesome. And awesome. no, it's not photographic. And uh, believe me, there's some things I've seen I wish I could not remember. Right. But <laughs> it is much better than it was. So. I have it. Yeah. Well, I think we'll wrap up this What's Up Wednesday. Woo-hoo. We've been all around the world on this conversation. <laughs> and uh, stay tuned for the new series. I don't know yet. I think it's going to be called What's the Craziest Thing You've Ever Seen? Does that have, does that hit well or not? I like it. It almost seems long. It is long. <laughs> well, considering I don't normally title my videos or my series. Right. Well, it's all like series, two words. So- but I, I, I could also, you know, you can't make this shit up. But that's kind of long too. <laughs> Since it's going to be on Rumble, I mean. <laughs> they're both accurate. Well, shit would not be S-H-I-T. Oh, true. You know, it would be like exclamation yeah, point and some other Shana. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I like yeah. that one. Yeah. But I do. The craziest thing, crazy, craziest, I don't know. I know whatever you decide in the moment will be just right. I'll ask, I'll ask the, our bosses what they think. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And that is another thing. Yes. They know we cuss. Yes, they do too. And they're, yes. Mother Sophia drops the F-bomb every now and again. <laughs> <laughs> and we know when she means. Back She's like, picture hot on fire and just let her do her thing. Exactly. Uh, I've had other people say that too. They're like, you're cussing to mother Sophia. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> and, and she still nice. loves me. <laughs> she still loves me. So it's just sounds put together and given a meaning. Yeah. So. Yeah. We all do it. Are we yes. think about doing it? And if you're thinking <laughs> about doing it, they already know anyway. Whether it's in your mind or out of your mouth, it's already known. <laughs> and that is where we will leave it today. On that note. <laughs> it was a good was chatting fun. with you and I'll you see too. you again next time. 